Good evening. This is our monthly Parent University webinar. Um, we are just waiting for several of our registrants to join in. So it'll be just a moment before we get started. Thank you for joining us tonight, though. Bunch of people coming in. Yay. <laughs> <clears throat> Here they come. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started um, since it's right around 5.30. Um, wanted to thank you for attending our Parent University webinar this evening. Uh, my name is Anne and I work for uh, the Communications Department at Douglas County School District. Um, <clears throat> and with the help of Sky Ridge Medical Center, we are able to um, produce uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Sorry, we are able to um, offer these great webinars and subjects. And I see I've got a raised hand, so I'm going to see. Um, Trisha, let's see. Um, okay, and just one second. Uh, Trisha, I will. Whoops. Okay. Oops. Okay. I think we're good. <laughs> no problem. All right. You're saying hi. <laughs> Thanks, Trisha. Yeah. Hi. You know, we're we're a friendly bunch, so. No problem with that. <laughs> um, the topic of tonight's Parent University webinar is nutrition and what growing bodies need to eat. Um, and I know personally, while raising my kids, you, know, you always think you're doing the right thing. So it's always wonderful to have nutritional experts um, confirming that hopefully you're making the right choices for your family and, and yourself, um, especially with all of the evolving information available. And it's hard to, to really decipher what is um, correct and what isn't. So um, I would like to introduce um, Amy Farisi. She is the manager of menu services for Douglas County School District. And then also Tara Gonzalez. She is um, the registered dietitian and menu and provides menu support for Douglas County School District. So with that, um, I will let our nutritional experts get started with their presentation. Thanks for joining tonight. Oh, and by the way, if you do have questions, um, please feel free to put your information in the chat box or enter it under uh, question and answers, or you can raise your hand and I will call on you. And um, most likely we will answer all questions at the end of the webinar, but um, please let me know if there's something I can provide for you. So thank you for joining this evening. Go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> And um, Anne is going to be moving the slides for us. So <laughs> yes, it's a group effort. Yes. <laughs> okay. And are you able to see the slides right now? I see the first slide, the intro Okay, slide. perfect. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. As Anne mentioned, my name is Amy Farisi. I am also a registered dietitian. I've been a dietitian for about 15 years. Um, prior to coming into school nutrition, which has been about 11 years, I was working in a hospital um, in the operation side of that. Um, I have been a, a chef in my past life, and I was a nanny for many years. So I have experience working with kids, food, and nutrition. So just to give you a little bit more background to what I, um, what I do, but my role in, with uh, manager of menu services in Douglas County, I, um, to keep it very simple, I basically write the menus and pick the food that your kids eat each day if they are eating with us. <laughs> And then I'll, and Tara, I'll let you introduce yourself a little more. Okay. Um, my name is Tara Gonzalez. I am also a registered dietitian. Um, I have been with Douglas County for five amazing years. Uh, prior to this, this is really my, it's my first big career, I should say. Um, before that, I was working in restaurants and a nanny as well. So always food and kids. Mm -hmm. And now um, I'm read my title is registered dietitian menu support. So I support Amy in every way that I can. Um, and I also create all the menus for um, the students that have any kind of dietary restrictions. Um, so if they're allergic to some food or if they just have some kind of dietary restrictions, I create menus for them so the students can eat at school with their friends. All right, next slide. 
All right, so um, just some of the topics we're gonna be discussing today, obviously we've gone through our introductions. We're gonna be um, highlighting some nutrition basics just so you understand um, you know, kind of the big picture of nutrition. Um, it's gonna be your, basically your nutrition 101, if you will. Um, we're gonna talk about what growing bodies need, um, some tips and tricks for picky eaters, and then we'll go into some questions. Uh, there'll be some other little categories that will fall within there, but um, that's just the highlight of what we'll be discussing. Um, and before we get too far into it, I just wanna give a quick little disclaimer that when we're doing our discussion and we're talking about um, nutrition, we're really talking about sort of the average uh, individual child. Um, so we're not focusing on students who are high performing athletes or who may have special dietary needs because they will have unique um, uh, needs to what we're discussing. Uh, again, from a holistic perspective, a lot of this does carry over, but there are specific needs that both of those categories um, we could discuss, but they would need their own presentations because there's a lot um, of information there for those specific categories. All right, so next slide. All right, so when we're talking about the basics of nutrition, um, we wanna start with our mac macronutrients. So these are the nutrients that our body needs in larger amounts in order for us to function properly. They are the nutri nutritive, pardon me if I mess up on some words here, nutritive components of foods that the body needs uh, for energy and to basically maintain our structure and our, our body structure and systems. No healthy diet should really be excluding any of these or seriously restricting any of these macronutrients unless there's a medical reason to do so. Um, so I just wanna stress that, you know, there's a lot of people who try to eliminate specific carbohydrates or excess proteins, but really it's about um, maintaining all of those within the diet. Um, so we're going to talk about the three macronutrients real quick. Um, carbohydrates is the first one. Um, these are the primary fuel for the body. They provide your energy for your muscles, the central nervous system uh, during movement and exercises. So again, it's something, we're, these are all probably things you're familiar with, but um, they, their main functions are really, again, to provide the energy. They help with digestive health. Um, they impact cholesterol levels. Um, and then they also have um, specific, specific um, correlation to how amino acids work. Uh, sources you will find those in would be your whole grains, your vegetables, um, lentils, dairy, et cetera. Um, and then beyond being a main energy source for our body, um, we also need these to help with our bowel movements. Again, it's not, you know, fun stuff to talk about with kids, but it's important, you know, these it, a healthy, healthy bowels, a healthy, healthy kid. So um, when we talk about this, we're, um, we kind of need to think about carbohydrates in a couple of different ways. So we have fiber, which is um, a type of carbohydrate actually, but there's really no energy source in fiber. This is really the main thing that helps again with your GI tract and digesting foods. Um, and it just helps eliminate waste and keep that healthy um, intestinal tract. So the next form of a carbohydrate would be your simple carbohydrates, which are much easier to break down for energy. Uh, usually you think about these as having a sweeter flavor, um, things like honey, agave nectar, fruit, milk, yogurt, things like that. Um, complex carbohydrates are the next form of carbohydrate that um, you could, would want to consider, and these take more time for your body to break down. They typically have more of a savory taste to them. So um, again, things that are starchier, such as grains, rice, pasta, bread, and then even starchy vegetables, such as potatoes and corn. Um, most carbohydrate, uh, complex carbohydrates contain fiber unless they are processed or refined. Um, so you think of your, um, your white flowers, your white pasta, your white um, rice, things like that. Um, basically that bran layer, which is the outer coating of the fiber um, has been stripped or removed. Um, it's not to say that these should be eliminated or are necessarily bad for your diet, but they should just be eaten in more moderation and trying to round out with more of your whole grains that contain that fiber layer um, to again, to help with your um, healthy intestinal tract. So proteins are the next big macronutrient. Um, these are um, very important for several processes within your body. They provide, mainly provide structure to our tissue, such as like our muscle, our hair, bones, tendons, even our blood plasma. So again, very important for us. Um, they are involved in many um, metab metabolic and hormonal systems, and they also help maintain the pH balance within our body. Um, so one of Tara's favorite, I like this too, this is one of her favorite kind of um, analogies with um, 
uh, proteins is there for kids, especially is they're like um, Legos. They're the building blocks of our body. We, we need these to survive and um, in whatever format we, we eat them. But um, again, I'm not gonna go through all those functions that I have listed here on the chart, but um, major sources of these would be nuts and seeds, soy proteins such as edamame or tofu, um, even some whole grains such as oats and quinoa, um, and then your animal proteins such as eggs, meat, um, fish and dairy. And then fats are the next one that are important to discuss. And fats are really, um, they're, they're to store energy for us. They um, help cushion our organs. And in fact, our brain, if you did not know this, is about 60% fat. So um, I know you think you've got a fatty brain, that's a good thing. Um, but they also help make certain hormones. They help support your cell growth. And they also help keep your um, cholesterol, and, cholesterol and blood pressure under control. Um, and then one of the other big things that they're used for is to help absorb and transport fat soluble vitamins, which we'll talk more about um, in the next few slides. Um, forms that, um, of fats would be your vegetable oil, oils, um, avocados, nuts, and nut butters. Um, additional ones are listed there as well. Um, and then a couple of, just to break down fats a little further, because you do see these on food labels, um, there are three types of fats. There's trans fat, saturated fat, and unsaturated fat. Um, trans fats really are something that as much as possible, especially when they're added to foods should be, um, cut out of the diet because, um, they, um, have, a, they can really impact your, um, cholesterol and your, um, heart health. They, um, are found in things such as margarine, shortening, um, fried foods. Um, again, you, there are naturally occurring trans fats. So, um, but most food labels are required to show those and it, you'll start seeing more and more manufacturers um, removing those trans fats from their, their products. And certainly in school foods, they're not allowed. Um, saturated fat um, is in large amounts, um, is known to increase cholesterol um, and can also increase your risk for heart disease. So you often hear trying to um, limit or avoid saturated fats um, as much as possible. Um, you know, these are again found naturally occurring in foods such as animal proteins. So, um, Avoiding them can be hard, um, but uh, again, they are they can be beneficial to you as well. So it's more about moderating and limiting the amount you eat, um, but they can be beneficial to you if you um, if you do limit them. Um, unsaturated fat is what we often think of as the, the healthy fat, and that's because they can decrease our risk for heart disease. These typically um, originate from plant sources, such as avocados and nuts, um, and olives and olive oils and um, other types of oils. Um, they can be found in um, animal sources, such as fatty fish, which would include salmon, um, tuna, um, herring for all of you that eat herring out there, such the foods like that. So um, I just also want to stress that, you know, sometimes fats get a bad reputation um, because they are high in calories and certain ones, again, I stress are, can um, impact your heart health. But um, overall, they, they are instrumental to a healthy diet. So um, eating them in uh, moderation and, and watching the ones that you are eating is very important. All right, so next slide. Okay, so we're gonna try to touch on micronutrients here um, as quickly as possible. So when we think of micronutrients, these are basically just your vitamins and minerals. Um, they are equally as important as your um, macronutrients, but they are just needed in smaller um, portions. Um, and they also have um, very important functions within your body. Um, the biggest thing to remember with micronutrients is that they, um, with the exception of a few that can be synthesized within your body, such as vitamin D, um, all of them have to be um, consumed through food. So the only way you can get your micronutrients is through food, um, again, with the exception of a few. Um, the, uh, they, so they are, in that fact, essential nutrients. Um, the ones that we want to think about are your water soluble vitamins, your fat soluble vitamins, macro mineral minerals, and trace minerals. Um, and I, I'm going to just quickly say that, you know, if um, it's important to consume these in um, the right amounts as much as possible because deficiencies um, can cause serious health consequences, as well as um, eating excess of those specific um, macro, um, micronutrients. Apologize. Um, so next slide. So our water soluble vitamins are pretty much all of the B vitamins. Um, and yes, there is a B4 and a B8 and a B, you know, all those other ones, but they're, they're not the ones that we think about the most. Um, 
And these um, are just as they say, they are um, dissolved within water. Um, so, which is why they're called water soluble. They're not easily stored in your body. So they're often flushed out if, in your urine if you consume them in excess. Um, the example I use is if you take a lot of B vitamins and you notice after you've taken them, when you go to the bathroom, you have bright yellow um, urine. Well, that is because your body is flushing out those B vitamins because they're not being as absorbed um, as the fat soluble ones. But they are very important in triggering chemical reactions within your body, um, which help with energy conversion, with um, metabolism in your body. Um, they help with your um, red blood cell formation. Um, and they also are helping with um, creating uh, collagen and other neurotransmitters within your body. Um, the sources here is an overarching. These aren't, you know, some certain ones of these vitamins um, are specific to these foods, but a lot of overlap happens with these, these vitamins as well. Um, so your whole grains, meat, avocado, um, citrus fruits would be your vitamin C, um, peppers and Brussels sprouts. So um, a lot of great sources um, that you'll see here, but again, you'll see all the food groups as well with these vitamins and minerals. Um, so next slide. So the next one is our fat soluble vitamins. There are um, vitamins A, D, E, and K. And just as the name says, they um, do, do not dissolve in water and they are best um, consumed with a fat source um, because they are stored in your um, liver and fatty acid um, after you eat them. So they, they need the fat to help absorb them. Uh, they are important for proper vision, for calcium absorption, blood clotting. Um, and then your sources would be your sweet potatoes, I don't know a lot of kids that eat liver, but some may, um, sunflower seeds, soybeans, and leafy greens. And there's many more. I'm just giving a little snapshot of what those are. So next slide. So macro minerals are, um, mac or are needed in larger amounts than our trace minerals, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, and again, they have very specific roles in your diet, calcium, magnesium, uh, magnesium sodium, potassium. A lot of these things you do see on your food labels because again, they're very important. Um, they have everything from, you know, forming your bones and teeth to maintaining your fluid balance, um, and other, um, reactions within your body. Again, your sources would be milk products, um, seaweed, lentils, eggs, etc. Next slide. And then our trace minerals. Um, some of these you see on food labels, but other ones are a little less known. So you, these are going to be your, um, minerals that are needed in smaller amounts than your macro minerals. But again, very important functions. Um, you know, they're required for um, brain and nervous system function, um, immune function, wound healing. So a lot of these are important. I think zinc is the one that you hear a lot of times about wound healing, um, but iron falls into this category. Um, you know, I always think that if you, know, one of the things, the side effect of not having enough iron is anemia or iron deficiency. And that can cause um, irritability and uh, tired and you know tiredness and fatigue, things you don't want your child to have. <laughs> so making sure they get enough iron in their diet is really important. Um, and then some of the sources again are spinach, um, pineapple, yogurt, et cetera. All right, so next slide. All right, so one of the other um, nutrients that I think often gets overlooked by um, people in general, I know I forget to drink water a lot during the day, but um, water is so important to our diet. Um, it doesn't necessarily provide us with energy, but it is important to think of it as essential nutrient because it really helps keeping our body function properly and feeling healthy. Um, kids particularly, um, we need to make sure that we're getting them enough water and getting them in the habit of drinking enough water or getting enough water through um, uh, food products because they don't have the, quite the same ability to regulate their body temperature. And oftentimes kids are much more active than we are as adults. So they are losing more water throughout the day. Um, so proper hydration is so important. And if there's one takeaway from this, I would say make sure your kids and you are drinking enough water. Um, some of the reasons why are listed here. Um, I know lubricating joints is something that personally I probably need to remember <laughs> because as I'm creaking up and down the stairs. But um, you know, I just making sure that they're again the body temperature if they're you know per, um, doing a lot of sports or just playing a lot. Um, but it, it, then going going back to the talk about um, water soluble vitamins, um, these are important to help dissolve these um, vitamins within your body. 
All right, so next slide will be Tara. Let me unmute myself, all right. Um, hello, everyone. So hopefully you have seen this picture before. Um, this is my plate, which replaced the um, pyramid back in 2011. I can't believe it's been that long. Um, but I, it's just a great repre representation of like what our plates should look like when we, every time we eat. Um, so if you look at it, our plate should be half fruits and vegetables, grains, protein, and, and dairy on the side, if you can have dairy, of course. Um, but the benefits of healthy eating add up over time, bite by bite, like small changes matter. And it's really, for me, especially when we're working with kids, it, it's easy to start with my plate because you can even make it a game. And um, I actually have one of the handouts that um, you guys will be getting is a My Plate coloring page to like teach the kids how to color in there. Um, another fun thing I've done with kids is I've, I've cut out like magazine pictures of fruits and vegetables and grains and proteins and dairies and had them like put it on the spot where it's supposed to go just so they start learning what those um, food groups are and what are in those food groups. Um, but it's, it's important to encourage your kids to start making healthy choices at a young age and always lead by example. If you're not going to eat something, the kid's not going to eat it either because they're going to see what you're doing. Um, but encouraging them to listen to their bodies, even at a younger age, is really important. And listening to their body's cues for when they're hungry and they're full, um, when they start you know, younger, then they'll learn later on in life how to eat in a more healthy way. It, it, I have to say healthy like that because some things that are healthy to pe some people aren't healthy to others, but um, a healthy eating routine is important in every stage of life. It can have a positive effect that adds up over time. Um, it's always important to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables and grains and protein foods. Um, and whenever I teach nutrition education, I always remind the kids to eat a rainbow and no, that's not with Skittles. Um, and us at Nutrition Services, we are trying to do our part in that um, we have a harvest bar in every single one of our schools. And so we have a rainbow of foods on the harvest bars that the students um, go through every day and the kids are actually able to choose what they want off that, that harvest bar. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but um, next slide, please. All right, so this, I'm not gonna go through um, all of these, but um, it's, it's, it's good to know that um, everyone needs the same types of proteins um, and vitamins and minerals, carbohydrates and fats. However, children need different amounts at, of specific nutrients at different ages. Uh, the best eating pattern for a child's growth and development cons is considerate of their age, activity level, like Amy had said earlier, and other characteristics. Um, a huge part of a kid's growth takes place between the ages of 10 and 12, and then it peaks around 13 and 14, again, depending on the child. Um, and so that increases their metabolic needs, meaning they're going to need more calories and vitamins and minerals for development. Uh, so food packed with nutrients with no or limited sugar or saturated fats or salt added, which is always hard, I know, um, is considered a dense food. So trying to focus on these nutrient dense foods uh, can really help kids get the nutrients they need while limiting overall calories. And I'm going to put another caveat in there. We know that kids we all like our sweets and everything and we will never say you know don't eat that don't eat that like it, it's just everything in moderation like amy said earlier uh next slide please um so this one sorry the first slide was for males um and then the second slide is for females um there's a lot of similarities but um there's a few differences too as the students get um older back to yeah <laughs> no worries <laughs> That's okay. Um, but you can see how the calories increase as the students get old, as the um, children get older. Um, a lot of the, and again, that's just because of um, their metabolic needs and they, their bodies need more as they're getting, as they're growing. Um, next slide, please. Awesome. So I had to add this and I had to talk to Amy about why I needed to add this. Um, 
I know that it's not always easy to achieve to eat together as a family, but even if you can try to do it one time a week or a couple times a month, um, it can really help encourage health, help, helpful and healthful eating habits. And it's a great time to unwind and actually talk to the kids and, and learn about what the kids are doing. Um, we always had, well, when I was growing up, we didn't have cell phones, but we weren't allowed to have the television on. Um, if the phone rang, it we had an answering machine and it went to the answering machine. And I kind of made fun of my dad at the time, but then like now thinking about it, it really helped us like be, be better as a family and learn more about each other. Um, and then the other part, showing the kids, you'll try everything on your plate. Um, encourage them to take a no thank you bite. Um, don't impart your personal preferences on them because if you tell them, oh, I don't like mushrooms, I'm not gonna eat those they're gonna hear that and they're not gonna to wanna to eat it because mom or dad doesn't like it. So why would they like it? Um, I always like to encourage kids to try new things and let them know that we all have different taste buds and what I like, they might not like and what they like, I might not like. Um, it's also important not to make food as a reward. Uh, for example, try not to say no dessert until you eat your vegetables. By saying that, you're, you're saying that um, foods like vegetables, like nourishing foods um, seem like don't, aren't, as, aren't as good as the, as the desserts are. And so then they start kind of thinking that, oh, well, vegetables aren't as good as this dessert. So it's just, and I know it's easy to do because you want them to eat it, but just encouraging them to try stuff and encouraging that no thank you bite is, it, it, it goes a lot further. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Um, again, I'm going to just keep saying the word encourage because we can't make them eat anything, but we can we can sure encourage them to. Um, but try like encouraging more fruits and vegetables. I just added a few ways um, that I think are easy. Uh, smoothies are one of my favorites to do, especially when I'm teaching nutrition education to kids, um, making smoothies with fruits, vegetables and oats putting an oatmeal in there. Um, so then you're getting every single food group um, because if you do fruits, veggies, oats, yogurt, then you got your protein and dairy in the yogurt. Um, you can also try uh, tofu if it's a silken tofu, um, it actually blends really well. And, um, and then if you, when, when you're looking for like um, yogurts or any kind of milk, it doesn't have to be dairy milk, um, but make sure there's some fat in it because as Amy taught us earlier, those fat soluble vitamins need a, a fat molecule to connect to so that your body absorbs it. Otherwise your body isn't really gonna absorb those fat um, soluble vitamins if there's no fat in that meal that you're eating. Um, and then baking, adding bananas, zucchini. I add spinach to a lot of my baked goods too. Um, yes, you can see it, but you can just try to encourage the kids to try it and you know, you can make up fun names for it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there with names, but, um, and then treats, uh, try eating nutrient dense snacks. Um, anything with like nut or seed butter with bananas or apples are great. Um, and then combining like grapes and cheese and you've got your protein and your vegetable. Um, it's, it's also important to try to start early with the kids, like get them in the kitchen with you, get them cooking with you, let them touch things, smell, chop, peel. Um, yes, they're gonna make a mess, but to me, that's half the fun. Um, and then when they're, like when I've taught cooking classes with kids, when they're actually doing hands-on with those foods that might be considered scary to them, it's not as scary because they're seeing it, they're smelling it, they're cutting it. Uh, maybe they're trying little bites before it's cooked um, and it really helps them to try new things. Um, another thing, another suggestion I have is to um, put vegetables in your eggs in the morning. I, I don't know how to make a scrambled egg without spinach, peppers, poblano pepper. Um, my husband loves it. He doesn't, but he eats it because he can't taste it, but he can see it. Um, but you can call them rainbow eggs because that's always fun. Um, 
But like I said earlier about our Harvest Bar, um, you know, this is one of the ways that we like to encourage our students um, at Douglas County to try new fruits and vegetables because with that Harvest Bar, they're able to see different things almost every single day. And then they're able to choose what which ones they want. We're not telling them which ones to put on their tray. And so they they have a more buy-in of what they get to try. Um, and it's really eye-opening to see like how many students really enjoy that harvest bar. I love it. Um, yep, oh, <laughs> whole grains uh, back. Yep, there we go, portable protein. Um, nobody likes to be hangry. So especially when you have kids and they have a lot of um, sports after school or just picking them up after school, Try having protein snacks available um, on the go. Uh, some of these things you can have in your purse or in a bag or even just a small cooler. Um, eggs and yogurt, of course, would have to be uh, chilled. I just remember that. <laughs> uh, but it's it, they're great sources of protein and a great way to um, get those nutrients in them when they're you know super hungry after school or after those sports. Uh, next slide. All right, whole grains. So Amy talked about whole grains and um, some of the benefits of those. Here are some suggestions on whole grains. Um, they're an important part of complex carbohydrates, like Amy said. And my favorite one, of course, is they contain dietary fiber and that's great for our digestive health. health. Um, it's important to have half of your grains whole grains. And then if you have you know, non-whole grains, Try getting ones that are enriched. Um, and when they're enriched, that means they're gonna um, put the B vitamins and iron back into it. Um, but eating whole grains can reduce risks of heart disease, can help with weight management, and can really help support um, healthy digestion. Uh, they suggest eating two to three servings a day of whole grains. Um, and if this is new to parents and kids, start slow. Select a bread that has um, half of the grains from whole grains and then slowly transition to 100% whole grain. Um, in the upper right hand corner, it's a little label that says 100% whole grain. That's what you want to look at on the labels or look at the labels um, in the ingredient list and look for ones that, that label it as a whole grain product first. Um, don't just go by what it says on the package of the outside, look at the ingredient list because they are required to put everything that's in that product in the ingredient list. Um, another thing that you can do is to uh, try mixing like white rice with brown rice and kind of start out slow that way. Um, again, my husband loves it, he doesn't, but he, he tolerates it. He doesn't really have the choice. Um, but if you, if you do like switch out to brown rice, if you're doing a stir fry, if you're mixing it with the sauce, your family may not know if you just hide that box of brown rice, just put it in the back, don't let them see it. Um, but that can, that can really have a lot of um, beneficial um, nutrients that are added to that meal. Um, and then whole grain crackers, that's a great way to um, increase the whole grains because there's so many great whole grain crackers out there. I think if they have enough salt on them, then they taste really good. Put some cheese on it, or again, a nut, some kind of nut or seed butter for that extra protein. Um, and then you can get a serving that way. Uh, next slide. Oh, back to Amy. Unmute, there we go. All right, so kind of just overarching with what we've talked about when Tara really um, kind of hit home with specific foods is remembering moderation and variety to being key elements to eating healthy. Uh, finding a balance between the various food groups and watching intake of any one ca category are vital components of, a di of dietary moderation. Um, there's no like true scientific um, uh, language or definition of moderation in a diet, but um, as a whole, that would be, if the, the definition if you could, but um, so again, there's no specific guidelines to what moderate is, but um, so when we're thinking about this with our kids, it's really just helping them consume a variety of foods um, in sensible portions, um, as opposed to skipping entire food groups or consuming an excessive amount of one type of food. 
Um, I, again, I'm talking about carbohydrates, um, just making sure that you're offering a balance of whole grains, um, limiting your refined grains and sugars rather than removing all carbohydrates from the diet. Uh, variety, on the other hand, is super important as Tara discussed, because it's just, it helps with the overall nutrition. You, you can't get all of the nutrients you need in one type of food or one food group. You need a variety of foods to get all of those nutrients you need, whether it's the macronutrients or the micronutrients. Um, and it's actually, I, and I understand this as a parent, it's easy to get stuck in food ruts. Um, but when you find something your kids actually like, um, but it's really important to keep trying to encourage them. I'm going to use that word again <laughs> to, um, to have some variety. And, and it starts with you in a lot of ways because um, you're the one providing that food for them at home um, on the weekends and the evenings and the, um, in the morning. And then it's our job during the day, hopefully to provide them with food um, that meets those needs as well. Um, and then we'll go to the next slide. Okay, this is the fun one. Okay, so as a, before we start doing this, as a parent of two teenage daughters, I thought it was really important to discuss social media and nutrition. Um, one of the most commonly or widely types of content that is out there with TikTok particularly, but even Instagram is health and nutrition. And most of this information is being shared by influencers who have no um, medical background, nutrition background. Um, they are just people that are trying things and thinking that it's gonna be the biggest craze and that it's, it's nutritional or whatever it is. Um, there's actually been a um, study from the University of Vermont um, that shows that um, the, the food, nutrition, and weight loss content on TikTok encourages a toxic diet culture among teens and young adults. Um, and then oftentimes, as I said, true researchers and medical professionals or people who have a background in nutrition and, and health um, are not included in this mix of information our kids are getting. So if I could offer any advice with this realm of it, um, I think we all understand that being engaged with your kids with what they're seeing on social media is really important. Um, but when it comes to food specifically, I think it's important to talk to them about what they're watching because it, not only because of what it is they're watching, but why they're watching it. Um, you know, you can maybe catch something early if there's, um, you know, some if, for some sort of food issues for some food eating issues and also just making sure that when you are talking to them about that, you can help them actually do real research on what it is that they're looking into and finding out the kind of the facts behind that and give them that influence, that, that data to really influence their decision to see if it's something good. So I had to show you this one thing because I asked my daughter, I'm like, okay, you guys send me some crazy stuff that you see on TikTok. So here we go. <laughs> oh, the volume, can we? Okay, so since you guys can't hear her, um, let's see if I, I can, I can walk you through what she's eating. <laughs> we'll see if we get the sound first. No, I, maybe if you unmute your screen, Anne, can you unmute your, let's try that. It's, it's vinegar and pineapple. Is that working? So it's, it's a stick of butter with a fruit roll up wrapped around it in vinegar and tahini. Hmm. So this is the kind of stuff that's out there, right? And <laughs> I just had to show that because if you're not help watching what your kids, I mean, again, it's a much bigger thing than just food. There's so much other stuff that we need to be watching with social media, but it's kind of crazy. Some of the things, and I, then there's all these other little images I put up there, but again, just to make sure you're talking to your kids about these things. Um, all right, so next slide. All right. Oh, no, it's, she still wants to keep talking about butter. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so it wouldn't be um, a conversation with school nutrition specialists if we didn't talk about school meals. So, um, and I'm going to let Tara chime in too, because I know she is equally as passionate about um, what we do and what we provide students each day. But um, for those of you that don't know, next school year, just like last year, all meals will be free for students again. Um, and this is across the country. I'm sorry, no, sorry, this is only in Colorado and other states. We're hoping that eventually it'll be across the country. But um, our state has passed um, into law um, for us to be able to provide meals to, for, for free to all students. 
Um, and because this could be one or two meals that your child eats each day, um, we just thought it'd be important to talk about it, um, what it really means, because I think a lot of times people have an idea of what school meals are and what they aren't. And we just wanted to kind of just highlight what it is we do. So um, first of all, school meals, um, we are regulated by the USDA, so the Department of Agriculture. And they are the people who, along with the Health and Human Services Department, are um, responsible for creating the dietary guidelines for Americans. So all of our programs we have, are required to follow those dietary guidelines. Um, so that's the first thing that's important to know. We also have um, age-specific guidelines that we are required to follow for um, portion size and calories based off of um, the age and grades. So we really we have a menu that's um, focused um, on those categories with elementary school, middle school, and high school. Um, so again, it falls into that, that dietary guidelines. Um, we are also, when we talk about balanced, we are required to offer whole grains, uh, meat or meat alternates, fruits, vegetables, and milk, fluid milk, so low fat milk each day. Um, these are again, a required, all required to be offered with our meals to make them what we call reimbursable. Um, our students are required to take a fruit and vegetable with their meal each day as well. Um, we in Douglas County, we set ourselves a little bit higher in this, our standards. I feel like um, with what we do, again, I, you know, may be a little biased because it's, it's what I do, but I always like to think what, what I'm providing to the students in the district is what I would provide to my own kids. Um, and while we do have some flexibility on the whole grains, we only have to offer 80% um, of our grains have to be um, what we call 51% or 100% whole grain, at least 51%. Um, I would say most of it, with the exception of a flour tortilla, which is enriched, all of our other grains are whole grain. So, and we actually are switching back to brown rice next year, which we kind of um, gone. So next year will be brown rice again. But um, so anyhow, we do a really good job with our grains. Um, we also offer um, as much as we can. And most of our products, frankly, when it comes to our meats, are a whole muscle product and it, they're usually NAE, so no antibiotics ever um, when we're talking about chicken. Um, and then when it's a product that would contain a nitrate or something, we um, really try to um, find foods that are nitrate free. Um, so just kind of want to highlight that in our, with what we do. Um, we also try to source locally as much as we can, which we're very proud of. Um, Colorado, in some ways, is um, a bit challenging when it comes to fruits and vegetables because we don't have a whole, like, it's not like Florida or California, but we do what we can to provide local food and even local um, food manufacturers to, um, to work with us. Um, and then, you know, as Tara talked about was um, the harvest bar, and that kind of goes into the variety thing um, from the fruits and vegetable side of things. We have a harvest bar in all of our schools every day. We offer at least um, five, usually up to eight fruits, and fresh fruits and vegetables, canned or frozen fruits or vegetables as well. Um, and we are also required within that category, within our vegetables, to offer what we call subgroups. So we have to offer red orange vegetables, dark leafy greens, beans and legumes, starchy vegetables. So we have to offer that variety and we're proud to do it. We're, we want our kids to be experiencing these types of foods. Um, we also try to do what we call the harvest of the month. So we're bringing in foods that are a little less traditional. So Brussels sprouts, asparagus, um, it's been a little bit, um, we've had to take a pause on it for this last year and a half as we've been kind of dealing with all the the changes we've had, but when we do that, um, not only we're providing these foods, but we're providing different cooking methods. So we're roasting these foods. We're, um, um, you know, baking them in different ways that um, that kids maybe don't necessarily see um, if they've even had them at all. So again, we're very proud of the fruit and vegetable selection we offer, um, even though it is required. It's we're we're happy to do it, um, and we want to encourage our kids to see it there, so that when they come home, they'll talk to you about what they had and. Um, and then hopefully you guys will eat it at home as well. Um, and then additionally, um, all of our, um, our meal patterns and the menus we work with are, um, have to be a lower sodium. So, um, the one thing I always like to kind of talk about when parents ask me about, um, what we're serving in the schools or they have questions is that we have, we work specifically within, um, the school nutrition world. So a lot of the foods that we serve our students 
are designed and made specifically for the K-12 or the schools um, across the country. So the, let's say the chicken nugget that our students are having are not gonna be the same thing that they would see in the grocery store, because again, they're whole grain, they're breaded, they're a lower sodium, um, we again do a whole muscle product. Um, so, so a lot of times people think that something that we're serving is something they're seeing in the grocery store or whatever, but it's, it, it, it may be similar, but it's, it's created specifically for what we're doing. Um, and a lot of times people ask if they want to find those things in the store. And unfortunately, you know, like you can't get a Bosco stick in a grocery store, sorry, but they are delicious. <laughs> and, um, a lot of manufacturers are finding though, that kids really are the future of their, con their consumers and they are a big driver of their, their consumer market. So we're seeing a lot more products that are having a crossover effect, which is great because we want the kids to see the stuff that we're feeding them that they can also eat at home. I think that really is a good balance. So we're seeing a lot of that happen. Um, it's still not perfect, but um, I just wanted to kind of ex you know explain that to people because sometimes there's a lot of misunderstanding about what we do. Um, but we have, we're heavily regulated <laughs> by the um, USDA and then um, here in the state by the Department of Education. So um, Tara, do you have anything else that you would like to add? I know she, again, Tara is probably our biggest cheerleader. She's our, <laughs> she loves her job. <laughs> I do. I do. I, I love feeding kids. I love introducing them to new things. Um, and it, it's great, like going into the schools and working in the kitchens and encouraging the kids to try the beans that day or try the roasted Brussels sprouts. I know it might smell up the, the school, but they taste really good. And um, I mean, there's some schools that they put out roasted cauliflower and they, they can't keep up because the kids love it so much. And I'm like, well, are they telling their parents that? Like they can get it at home. Um, but it's, it, it, yeah, it's, it's fun to just see them try new things. And, um, and we all love what we do and we love being able to provide all of these nutrients for kids because some of the, some of these kids, these are the only meals that they are receiving, um, which is another reason why we're so excited that they're all gonna be free for everyone next year. And yes, that includes all of our special diets. Those meals are free as well. There's my plug. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we have, we have it. time for questions now. <laughs> And if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand or enter them in the question and answer box or in the chat. Um, oh, wait, I actually see one question pop up. Um, okay, in terms of taking vitamin D, um, it you recommended um, consuming it with a fat. Did you make a suggestion on what that might be? Um, well, I think, you know, vitamin D is one of those things where it's, it's naturally occurring in dairy products. So, um, especially for younger kids, um, whole milk is a great option because there's obviously a little higher fat content in that. Um, typically the higher fat content in milk, the less sugar as well, which is good. Um, but I mean, a lot of kids don't like milk. I will say, I mean, my, I, I was one of those kids who I think about age like nine or 10, I just stopped drinking milk. So I know it's hard to do that. So yogurt's a great source of higher fat yogurt. Again, you have less sugar in that, but you have a higher fat. Um, if you, um, either there, obviously there's a dairy issue or, you know, or a lactose intolerance or something, then you might need to find an alternative and certain ones are better than others. Um, I'll let Tara, do you have any other suggestions? Cheese is another good one. Was just about to say, yeah, cheeses and nuts for another good one for for good fats. Um, and it's just to remember, like those fat soluble vitamins to eat it with a, like any kind of fat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we have a great question from Katie, and she's asking, "Are nut and oat milks really better than dairy milk?" I will, I will talk about that one. Um, mm -hmm. So when I talk to people about milks, I don't drink dairy milk. I drink a pea protein ripple milk, which is delicious. Um, but it, most of the oat or most of the, um, I'm going to call them non-dairy milks are fortified with vitamin D, um, but they don't have a lot of protein in them. 
So if you're looking for that protein, then no, the, those nut milks, unless, unless it says that it's a higher protein, um, but like pea protein milk that has, gosh, I can't remember, I think like eight grams um, of protein and lower sugar than regular milk. Um, so I would just say whatever kind of non-dairy milk that you're looking for, uh, look for something that is higher in protein. Some of them do have fiber added to it as well. Um, which is always exciting for me to get that in my milk. Um, <laughs> yeah. And but, then I, oat milk is also higher in protein than an almond milk, for instance. I know you would think a nut milk would have more um, protein, but it typically doesn't. And if I'm going to do my quick little bug for um, for not drinking almond milk, um, having gone on tours with the USDA um, to several nut farms, almonds, almond trees suck water like no other okay. food source of any kind. I mean, it is ridiculous the amount of water that's needed to, pr to produce a carton of almond milk. So if there's any concern about water use <laughs> in the planet and um, water uh, conservation, I would say that would be a reason to avoid almond milk. Just throwing that little plug out there. <laughs> Good to know because when we were discussing nutrition, I mean, it's a worldwide um, situation and growing and feeding the, you know, <clears throat> things that provide the nutrition to us is becoming a real issue as well. So thank you. Um, excuse me. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. Well, I personally have a question. Um, I am wondering if it's possible to drink too much water. Uh, yes, it is. Um, you can overhydrate for sure. Um, and then what that does is it basically um, dilutes the, um, the minerals that the vitamins and minerals that you need in your body. So you talk about that pH balance and um, you know, you can to, you can dilute the sodium in your body and that can cause serious consequences by drinking too much water. It's fairly hard to do to some degree, but it is possible. And it, you can, um, I, off the top of my head, I can't think what the, um, the signs are, but you could, um, it, it is possible to drink too much water. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if we have any other questions. In the meantime, um, Amy and Tara, thank you so much for your expertise. Um, I want to go back and read all the slides. <laughs> try and you know um <clears throat> solve the nutrition mystery it's complicated and interesting mm -hmm. and you know we all try to get it right and still enjoy some of the fun things um let's see i yep i don't think we have any additional questions um so for all of our viewers this particular webinar is recorded and will be sent to your email um that you registered for the webinar with, as well as um, a few handouts that uh, we were referring to. And those will also be available on our Parent University uh, website for Douglas County School District. So you can find all the information there. Um, definitely feel free to email me if you have thought of additional questions that didn't come up this evening and we'll see if we can get answers um, for everyone. And uh, I apologize for the issues with the slides. Apparently my mouse is very sensitive if I touch any other part of my screen. So <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Oh. <laughs> um, and um, just uh, please um, look at any um, communications that's coming out from our school district regarding emails or newsletters or social media that is talking about any of our future parent universities. Um, they're very valuable to us and it's something we try and offer as a, as a nice um, benefit to our families. And um, I um, don't envy either of you. You have quite a challenge feeding an entire school district because I can barely figure out what dinner is going to be every night. <laughs> so <laughs> I can guarantee we have a menu team. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. It's um, a big puzzle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll have herring. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't have any. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have to find that. But um, 
so um, unless we have any other questions, we'll probably wrap up the webinar. Thank you again for um, joining us this evening. We hope to see you in another webinar soon. And Amy and Tara, thank you for your expertise. It's been a really fun evening, and we appreciate everything you do for our kids. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. Okay. Have a good night. We'll talk to everybody soon. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.